Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Sports Sports Podcast. I'm Jordan Pomville, and joining us, as always, is the sports outsider, Phil Ranta. I can't help but notice there's something missing again. Yes, yes. There's only two sports, and that's not the name of the show. No, the name of the show is the Sports 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 Podcast. That must mean one thing. The ogre is missing. <laughs> Someone release the ogre. Yeah, well, that, that, that goes, we're recording in a cave today. Yeah, yeah, that's where the echo's coming from. So, yeah, and, and the, the resident ogre, Joel, is, is not here. Yeah, he's not, right? He's out scaring townsfolk <laughs> and looking being chased for, by pitchforks. Looking for bones to crush into flour. Right. Right, that's what yeah, ogres do. Yeah, they make their bread out of bone-crushed flour. Oh, that sounds terrible. They're like Amish ogres. That's very probably very high protein, i got to imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Marrow. <laughs> But so anyway, so Joel's not here. Yeah, thank God, right? Right. So I will ask you, Phil. Yes. Did you catch any games this week? Nope. Olympics are over. No games. <laughs> no games. Now, so now you're pretty much done until... No, I was moving all week. That's why there's the echo, because everything was taken out of my apartment. Now it's just a big empty room we're recording in. Podcast Studios USA is it, moving. It is, yeah. It's moving down the street. Or Comedy Podcast Network USA. Comedy Podcast Network Studios. Uh, Hulk Hogan's our receptionist here, and he had to move. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. That was tough. He's probably really cranky about it. He was. He didn't call me brother. What? Yeah, he was that cranky. Did he hulk up? That's what he does when he's angry, right? Yeah, he ripped his little yellow shirt. There's like when he, that's when it, no, the more you make him move, the stronger he gets it. I think, I think I you're guess. thinking of the Incredible Hulk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, not Hulk Hogan. Isn't there a thing where he hulked up or like if you hit him, he would get stronger from, from getting hit? We'll, we'll say yes. No, am I, am I making this up? I, I, never, I didn't I watch a lot know, of wrestling. I don't know to what you're referring. If that, <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. Well this, well, this is a sports podcast. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, don't, and, and you don't watch sports until now uh, winter of 2014? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a while. <laughs> it's going to be a while before I watch sports again. Oh, my God. Well, well, I look forward to the podcast between now and then. Yeah, it's going to be a bummer. <laughs> every, I'm going to bring the mood down for the next two years. Every and, and, and again, I know I ask this every time. Did you catch a glimpse of any games on television? Uh, you know what? No. I barely turned on a TV because I, I was moving. Okay. That's like, I, I, I believe it. I watched a little bit of Colbert Report. Does that count? Did he talk about sports? No. Uh, yeah, it doesn't count, huh? Not really. No. Nah, I'm sorry. A sports I highlight threw. show would have counted. Yeah, I didn't, though. Uh, Why sports highlight show? That's cheating. Well, no, it's still pretty good. It's like you know, you don't you don't have time to watch a bunch of bad television shows. Yeah. So you watch the soup because it does a summation of them. Yeah. You know. Well, my great. brother uh, used to watch Sports Center in the morning before high school. Oh yeah, those were the and days. I would not. I was generally playing video games right up until the time I had to leave. But every once in a while, I would stop to watch plays of the week on Sports Center. Plays of the, the week. week. Uh, yeah, I would watch that because that was the only exciting thing to me. It was just buzzer beaters and people diving for fly balls. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, the best part about sick days for me, and for you, it was probably playing video games. Yeah. But oh, God. I yes. would watch Sports Center, and a lot of males did. So I would watch Sports Center like four times over. A lot of males? Is that the demographic? Yeah, that a lot of so males who would say, oh, I'm from. You're such a marketing asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of males, 12 to 18. They when they, they, when they stayed home sick from school, they would watch Sports Center, even though it was a rerun, over yeah. and over. Oh, we got some of those sick school children demographics. <laughs> Sell them Verners. Yeah. Uh, They're all drinking Verners. All right. Well, we got some sports news, Phil. Okay. Lay the, it on me. The biggest story, San Francisco Giant outfielder, Milky Cabrera. Milky? Or Milky Combinera. Milky? <laughs> like Mil- milk? It's M E L K Y. Milky. Oh, Ma- Melky. Like Melky Martakamas from Perfect Strangers. No, that was Belky. Oh, okay. Bel- 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 same, same deal. <laughs> yeah, well, very, very similar. Uh, also comes from a different country. Oh, good. Like Belky. Not Mepos. Oh, that's too bad. In this case. He doesn't do the dance of joy. Standing tall. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, he does not do the dance of joy. He just got busted for, uh, tested positive for synthetic testosterone. Ooh. So that means he's cheating. So he's banned for 50 games. Oh, that's too bad. I, well, yeah, and it just bums me out. But here's, here's what's funny about it. So to try to get out of it, mm-hmm. 
he had this guy who works for his agency as a sports agent. And his, his guy, Juan Nunez, okay, uh. purchased an existing Spanish language website, actually three of them, that aimed at selling health products. And in this case, made it for a fictitious supplement and put a banner ad for this supplement and put a picture of this jar um, advertising this product, this fictitious product they just created, so Melky Cabrera could have the plausible deniability of, oh, you know, I just went to this website and bought this product. Oh, that's I must have got low. a bad. I just must have got a bad batch. And Bud Selig first, you know, the Major League Baseball steps in because he tests positive, so they yeah. start they start looking into this. Bud Selig had to turn his safe search off. Was terrified of the internet. Thought it was broken. Well, well he's old, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an, an old, old gentleman. We had him on the show once. Yeah, Very nice yeah, guy. Yeah, doesn't see a lot. Doesn't can't tell the forest from the trees. Sure. A um, little bit of a doofus, if I remember properly. A little bit. A little bit of a goober. Yeah, a goober. He was a total goober. Um, but MLB officials purchased the product, traveled down to the Dominican Republic, where the website was based, to pick up the product. Whoa. To keep a low profile. Normally, you'd wear baseball caps, I'd think, but these people are from baseball, so I thought maybe like knit caps. Yeah, yeah, like hipsters. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they buy the product, send it to the World Doping Agency. They test it. They're like, ah, this is, this is synthetic testosterone. But, but then they're like, well, they, what, you know, basically, and then they realize doing uh, forensics mm-hmm. on the website that, the, in fact, this guy who was associated with Melky's agent had done it. The first tip Whoa. off was a GeoCities website. No, no GeoCities no. is still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was an Earth Fire. It what, was. <laughs> what's that called? It's not Earth Fire. That would be, fr- that would be frightening. Hot Fire? Was that one? Hot- Angel Fire? Was that it? Angel Fire. Yeah, that there we go. Yeah. That was it. So Still anyway. frightening. I never really thought about the angel fire. Jesus. Oh, my. That does Who sound came terrifying. up with that scary branding? Uh, probably one of those, one of those uh, Christian evangelical types. That's, you know, right, something, right. You know, scary, like angels with fire will come or down. Or like and, Marilyn Manson, who's like, I'm going to burn angels. <laughs> yeah. That sounds more likely. Yeah. Marilyn, when, Marilyn Manson, when he sat on, uh, you know, the board of directors for MSN or whoever. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was a different time. Different time, the '90s. Um, but basically, but basically, yeah. So it's just what what lengths he'll go to to try to escape. But anyway, so they found out it was him, and he's not going to face any further punishment. But but how much money does he make per game? Uh, it must be a lot. Well, what, what people say he lost like sixty million plus dollars because he was going to be a free agent after this year. So oh. this was his contract year, and he was having his best year ever. You know, for sixty million dollars, I'd probably frame some Dominicans. <laughs> We didn't frame him. Like I said, it was all a plot to try to make it look like I didn't know. Right. I just bought this tainted product. You know what? He should get a couple games knocked off his sentence for being crafty. <laughs> He's a very crafty gent. <laughs> that's, an, yeah, that's an interesting take. Phil. Yeah. Um, no, it's 50 games. Oh. Only 45 games left. Last five games will carry over into the postseason if the Giants make it. Or he's starting next season. Well, on the they bench. can't without Belky. <laughs> no, they can't. No. Or Cousin Larry. No, Cousin Larry. Uh, Cousin Larry <laughs> Appleton. <laughs> uh, last thing, uh, NFL. I don't, you, you, you probably don't know this. You know. No, I guarantee I <laughs> don't. Don't watch sports highlights news. But anyway, uh, the referees are locked out. Oh. Yeah. Like, the, like last year, the players locksmith? were locked out. No, 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 no. Like a, like, uh, you know, like a strike, but the opposite of a strike because the owners locked them out. Oh, and so it's like you guys keep complaining. You're not going to be able to go to work. Right, right. Weird. So, yeah. So now they're going to use replacement referees. Oh, a bunch of scab refs. Right, right. Which, you know, aside from the philosophical thing, I, you know, I'm, people are more concerned about them missing calls. Right. Which, I mean, we have instant replay now, so I don't see the threat there. Yeah, they should get robots to do that anyways. That's the other problem. Yeah. Fox NFL Sunday, the robot that, like, gets people psyched on, like, he's an animated robot. I'll take your word for it. He's also locked out. What? Yeah. You can't lock out the robots they're going because to it's re- against their programming. No, they're going to replacement robots, scab robots. No. They're going to be psyching you up. His name was Cletus, the, the, the Fox NFL robot. Well, just wait until they start killing all humans. Then they're going to regret <laughs> yeah, it. Then, yeah, then they'll... Uh, <laughs> yeah, as soon as you get them in one of those loops where both things are, one thing is true and the other thing is true and therefore they're both false. Once you get in one of those iterative loops, then the robot's head's going to explode and then there'll be no game. Is that what an iterative loop is? is I don't know, you just probably. Is, is that what sounds like the end of war games. Remember I think that, that that's tech-toe? right. I think that's what it's called, but I might be wrong. Write in if I'm wrong. <laughs> Hashtag athlete food puns. There we go. Um, and also, oh, we have a big guest today. Ooh, I like guests. Chairman of Augusta National. Ooh. Billy Payne. Ah, Augusta, Maine. No, Georgia. 
Ah, Georgia. Yeah, they just allowed us. Lordy. <laughs> Georgia. Yeah, one more time. We got a man. <laughs> Lordy. <laughs> they allowed uh, their first two female members in at Augusta National. Oh, wow. Condoleezza Rice? No. Yes. yes. Really? Condoleezza Rice of Condoleezza Rice fame? <laughs> yes, yes. Condoleezza Rice and Darla Moore, who's just like a, a financier type. Uh, uh, the, the wife of the person who made Dinty Moore beef stew, right? No, okay. no, that's not. But when you say them together, rice and more, sounds yeah. like a tasty dish. Oh, more rice. <laughs> yes, please. Um, so we'll have him on to talk about uh, what's going on at Augusta National now that they're allowing women in. Okay. And Phil, yeah. do we have a weird sport? You're goddamn right we do. It's been a while. <laughs> We've, is this is the weird sport echo? Yeah, the, <laughs> the weird sport is the National Echo Championships. That's actually pretty good. I don't know. Have you ever played Echo the Dolphin? Not a strong game. No. What, what, what the fuck was that what game? Was I did, that? I did play that game a lot. There was no purpose of that yeah, game, Yeah, right? all you do is you walk around and you go, ah, and then every once in a while one of the dolphins will be like, go free, Echo. And <laughs> yeah. then it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That was just that was a baffling game. Yeah, that was like mist, but without any of the like the exciting cool graphics yeah, and, and the... figuring out stuff. It was just you're a dolphin. Yeah, both games frustrating. <laughs> yeah, very frustrating. Yeah, to get your friend to help you cheat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Game All genie. Right. All right, let's get started. All right, let's do it. All right, this is exciting. Uh, welcoming into the studio here, Chairman of Augusta National, Billy Payne. Well, Jordan, I got to say, it's a pleasure to be here. It, it's, it's a pleasure to have you well, here. Well, thank you. You have a very thick Georgian accent. I, that's because I grew up in Augusta. <laughs> Augusta, Georgia. Not the one in Maine. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Yes. And in Home of the Masters, Augusta, Home of the Masters, a tradition unlike any We don't other. like to use the word masters down in Georgia. <laughs> really? It what? brings up some very negative thoughts about what we used to do down in Georgia. Ah, uh, okay. What with the slaves no, and I'm, all. No, obviously you didn't need to explain. I was sure. Thinking, I saw the movie The Help. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was about right. Um, I was alive back then. <laughs> Been golfing for a long time. But as you said, you're, you're, you have taken a, a, your predecessor, yes. Hootie Johnson. Hootie? Yeah. I only want to be with you. <laughs> that was a song by Hootie. Okay. Um, anyway, he, he once said that uh, we will not be letting women in at, at, the, at the point of a bayonet because people were, there, were, there was a lot of outrage that there was no, law, there was, there was no women in Augusta and it had been a longstanding thing. And you're a private club, so you don't have to allow in women. Yes, but Georgia is not a progressive state. But I like to think of myself as a bit of a progressive, blast dammy. <laughs> blast dammy. Well, that, that's good. Now, so, so that's Blast dammy is what we say. That's our exclamation down in a Georgia way. That's, that sounds great. That, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, the cultural differences are always great to learn about here. Yeah. Do you know what they say in England? What do they say? They say, cheerio. Like the cereal. <laughs> it's, it's insane that they say that. Blast dammy. Blast dammy. Okay, so uh, what? Now, why now then? Why women now? Why Condoleezza Rice and Diane Moore, or Darla Moore, I'm sorry? Well, we figured it was about time to bring in women because women are becoming more like men every day. Is that so? They've got jobs. Yes. They're motorists. Yes, they drive cars. Some of them even propose to the men before the men propose to them. Really? Yes. Is that really a thing now? That's a thing now. It's uh, the, I caught a show called The Bachelorette on the television. Oh, I've actually never seen it. Do that, is that how that works? The I don't know. I only watched the first five minutes. <laughs> But anyway. There's been a lot of changes going on at Augusta now that we're letting ladies in like Condoleezza Rice. Well, what, what, what sort of things you got going on there? Well, the first thing, something I just did this morning, I had to put in the little red ladies tees for all the lady folk to tee off from. Oh, that's true, yeah, because I guess not having women, you wouldn't have the, the... They need a little bit of a handicap when they're playing the men folk. Not to say they're handicapped, blast dammy. Well, okay, so I obviously understand. Well, what else are you doing there? Like, any changes in the clubhouse? or? Oh, there's some changes. Uh, as you may know, the clubhouse is generally a time for the men folk to come together and have a bourbon or a beer or some frog legs. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I well, follow. now we had to get a ladies' drink menu. 
A ladies drink menu. Yes, we had we created a drink called the Fru Fru. The Fru Fru is it just clear it's liquid? Hot pink. Okay. And uh, we put in a little bit of schnapps because right. that's what ladies and gay folk drink. Well, well y- you're kind of making some sweeping generalizations. But well, I'm very progressive. I met a gay once. W- one time. Yes. Who? Okay. He was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I assumed he was gay. Well, they could have just been a, a fan of Two and a Half Men. I Probably. doubt it. All right. Well, as you say, Billy. Um. Uh. So obviously, okay. So a women's drink. I assume you got to put in a women's locker room in there. Well, we decided to do even one better. What's that? As you know, ladies' bladders are no bigger than the size of a Titleist golf ball. <laughs> Yeah. So we ended up putting a bathroom at the end of every hole. Every hole? Yeah, every single hole, because we didn't want women to have to show off their privates peeing in the woods <laughs> like the men folk have been doing nigh on 150 years at Augusta National Golf Course. Well, that's, I guess that's I guess that's good. It's I'm very progressive. I, well, it's convenient, too. It's very convenient. You bet your blast damn me it is. <laughs> We've made a lot of other changes. What's that? Uh, shall I list through a few? Yeah, sure. I'd like I'd like to hear what what you're doing there. Well, we uh we had to make sure that it was fair for the lady folks in the same way that when uh bowling when the lady folks are bowling they put down the bumpers. Right. Put down bumpers in the gutters so they don't get sad when they throw a gutter ball. Right, right. That's bumper ball. Yeah. Yeah, so we decided to put up big plastic bumpers on the sides of the fairway. Bumpers on the sides. So that all the ladies, when they're hitting the ball this way in twine, it just bounces right back onto the fairway. So it doesn't go into the woods. You bet your blast damn it. <laughs> okay, well, that that's pretty good. Yes. We also require now that, that you generally they say to golf in Augusta, you have to wear long pants. Yeah. Well, yes. yeah, dress code. I you am. gotta look nice unless you're one of the little caddy boys and you throw them a gold piece for a licorice whip. They can wear shorts. Okay, right. Well, the women folk have to have a dress code, too, just like the men. Well, and you have to come up with one They've got to wear long skirts. Why is that? And long sleeves on their dresses. That sounds oddly like the Middle Because we don't want men to get distracted when they're trying to hit their drive by the side of our sexy ankle or some sort of devious lower back section. Well, that seems a little sexist. No, I mean, it's seems- very progressive. We're letting go. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But also, it seems a lot like the Middle East. But, you know, you know okay, tell me something else. Yeah, well, uh, we're going we're gonna to let female members uh, go through the same strict selective process as men. Okay. We want them to be equal. Right. However, we do have to abide by the sign that we've always had in the pro shop that says no fat chicks. Well, wait, what? You... There's a sign in the pro shop. We all had a hoot and holler over it nigh on 150 years. It says no fatties. <laughs> is it... I'm afraid that is something we have to abide by. That is tradition. That doesn't seem really pro- progressive. It's, it... it's, not, it's not that it's not progressive. It's a rule. <laughs> you are a private... I can't change something that was written on a placard next to our big mouth billy bass. <laughs> no, you can't. No, no you... I can't. Uh, we also had to change the golf carts. Well, how would you change the golf carts? Well, our golf carts, you know, they only had two seats up in the front. Right. Well, now we had to put in a back seat so that all the women can back seat drive as the men are driving around the golf carts. Okay, that has they to be They have to say, hey, go, hey, slow down. You're, you're hitting the gas too hard. It, you're supposed to take a left up by the tree. You should stop and ask for directions. <laughs> you can't. It has to be a joke. They can't. No, be we had to put in a backseat. <laughs> Ladies love backseat driving, back Oh yeah, and and also I would imagine uh, you know you got the backseat of the golf uh, cart. It could be a place to uh, have an intimate moment, maybe. Now that <laughs> is not befitting of the behavior of the Augusta National Golf Course. All right. I don't I don't mean to get you upset. No, it's okay. I'm just very progressive, so I get offended <laughs> easily, back damn it. Uh, you know, we also had to put up little designated areas right after the greens. What? what? We what? had to rope it off as little designated areas so that you have a little space where you can talk about your kids 
and you can talk what? about the kids of other people and how smart your kid is. <laughs> Even though she's only nine, three years old, she already looks at pictures and can identify <laughs> the difference between a rabbit and a horse. That's pretty, I guess. Had to put that up for the lady folk because they love talking about children. They do. That is so fucking Something of a hobby. Condoleezza Rice can get in that little pen and talk about her kids all day long. (laughs) I think she should call it a pen, I feel. Well, it is like a little pig pen, only for women. (laughs) Okay, all right. Well, I, I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we, we we know what you know. What I got one more. We well, got one more change. I got one more. What's all that? Right? We had to change that when people play in the golf. You can play as a twosome. Right. You can play as a threesome. Right. right. Or you can play as a foursome. Right. Now having women made us realize that you can't play as a threesome with two men on the team. Because that's gay, and gay people are still not allowed in Augusta National Golf Course. Baghdadi. <laughs> right, okay. I don't think that's... I don't, I don't agree with that. I'm very progressive well, I, I've for that. Georgia. Right. I gotta go. Ted Turner and I are gonna play a twosome. Yahoo! Google News. Face cake. All right, that must mean it's Google News time. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's Internet News. Internet News. Internet News, because every day there's probably 50 or so news stories. At least. There might be as many as 60. Not most days. Well, if you don't count all that international news, it doesn't matter, USA, USA, right. USA. Right. So, it's, But on the Internet, the Internet collects about, I would say, 10 of those, and they're yeah. terrible. And they, they, they're, just, they're just wasteful news. But right. Most of them are like, the president visited. Burr, burr, burr. And they'll have like a picture of him. Right. A helicopter. It's like, dude, we know what the president looks like. Leave right. us alone. We've seen it. Yeah. It's whatever to the separation of government and news yeah save it associated yeah. press it's called the first Nen- M- amendment read it read- i haven't <laughs> all right but this this was an interesting one umpire james joyce or jim joyce rather james joyce is in the yeah, writer of yeah, odysseus no, no no not in portrait of the artist as a young man oh yeah yeah uh no jim joyce uh, he, he's notable for blowing a call against uh, armando galarraga cost him a perfect game i don't know what this ago. means <laughs> well, we'll keep rolling. Okay. Anyway, he's in the news again. Sure. He performed CPR in the tunnel before a game and saved a woman's life. Really? Yes. She, it was a stadium worker. He's in the tunnel before the game with the other umpires. She goes down. He learns CPR. He goes there, starts performing CPR. Wow. Until, like, the paramedics get there. Paramedics get there to do the zappy pads, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, the d- defibrillators. Zappy pads. Zappy and, pads. And he keeps going, and he keeps going, and, and she's fine now. Wow. She's, she's recovering. A- she's after, sta- after she got up and she was okay, did he go, you're safe. <laughs> no, he visited her later at the hospital. Oh, that was, and then went, you're <laughs> safe. He might have said that. I bet he used that joke. <laughs> Undoubtedly. And she went, that's very funny, but I can't breathe. You're safe. <laughs> laugh, damn it. Yeah. Bring I in Robin laugh, Williams. It hurts my throat. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's much. It's good that he didn't have to say "you're out of here" really sadly as he covered her, closed her eyes. <laughs> oh. You're out of here. Dude. It'd be great if we had. A, we don't have it as a drop, but the theme to mash. Yeah. <laughs> After you're out of here, voice quivering <laughs> at the end. <laughs> <laughs> We do have that drop of mash. This yeah. is an apparently we do. And apparently also his his trick to, you know, when you're performing CPR. Yeah. Uh, there, you, you're supposed to keep your beats consistent when you're when you're pounding on someone's yeah. chest, I guess. And so that you know how he did that? How? By singing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Oh, I get it. Like, uh, 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 uh Staying Alive. Staying alive. And it's also a positive message to get someone who might be dying. God, he's like a superhero. Not unlike a superhero. He's like, he should start uh, jumping from building to building at night and looking out over the fair city of wherever he's from. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. sure. Maybe. Or he could just, I think he just could, should continue umpiring games and being the best he can be at that. How come nobody's ever written a graphic novel called The Umpire? Like, he keeps the rules. The umpire, it's, well, that, that sounds very authoritative. He keeps the rules. Right, right. Watching over a town. He keeps everybody safe. <laughs> Putting the bad guys away. Yeah. By getting them out. 
That's three strikes. <laughs> Going to the clink for a three-time loser. <laughs> Ground rule double. That's got to mean something. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? probably. They'll fit that in somewhere. All right, I think this has been internet news. That works. For you, the listeners of Sports 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 Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I personally recommend a wonderful book called The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Joel saw the movie. He said that it was okay. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network for your free audiobook. And now it's time for another Weird Sports! Oh, it's Weird Sports time! Oh, weird Sports! Weird Sports. All right, what do we got? We didn't even need, really need the echo effect. It's so echoey in here. Yeah, you're not going to need to do anything in post. Oh, nice. It's going to be so fast. It's going to be great. And, and you know what? Huh? You haven't even done a weird sports in like three weeks. It's been ages. People have been like emailing me, tweeting at me, at Phil Ranta, uh, and saying, I want weird sports. I want weird sports. That's what their voice sounds like in we my head. We need the Olympics. Yeah, I'm we want sports. Here, weird bunch, ones. This, this bunch of bullbuck. That's what they say. All right. Well, now we've got a weird sport. And this week's weird sport, dog surfing. No. Yeah. No. Dog surfing. What? Yeah. You can't do. Well, that's not. Well, no, a dog, a dog can't surf. No, when I came across this, though, you can picture like in commercials and stuff, they always have the dog with sunglasses on the surfboard, right? I immediately thought sunglasses on a surfboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's real. What? Yeah. That is not CGI. That is not George Lucas. Is it like that one clip of that water skiing squirrel? Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> YouTube. I love YouTube. Okay, but it's it's dog surfing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I and and, and I'm sorry. No. Yes. And you're not using a dog to surf like crowd surfing. Right. It's a dog surfing. No. First, you kill a bunch of dogs, <laughs> and then you fashion them into a shape of a surfboard, and then ride their carcasses on a wave. I was gonna say, who who needs to fashion them into that shape? Yeah, it's the true. purists probably just take the dogs as is. Yeah, uses them as a a, a flotation device, a surfboard, a, a skimming device. Yeah, and the dogs paddle a little bit, and then you just <laughs> and you just ride the waves. Oh man! Until you wipe out. Wipe out. All right, but tell uh, me more. No, this one's a little different. Uh, surfing dogs um, refers to uh, the board riders actually being. Uh, the, the, there's actual dogs on the surfboard. I guess the easy way to put it. <laughs> dogs right. surf. Yeah, dogs surf. Um, the sport's become really popular in San Diego. Uh, it's kind of the center of the dog surfing universe. Okay. So many surfers there that they were just high and being like, you put your dog in sunglasses and put it on a board. And after, and the first 20 dogs died. Right. Horribly. But then, oh, sure. And that 21st dog. 21st dog was a star. Um, oddly enough, uh, the, the sport became popularized on YouTube. <laughs> that's, that's not that surprising. Yeah. So this is a sport that's less than five years old then. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's kind of blown up since then. Uh, the dogs, it's only considered dog surfing if they're riding an actual surfboard. No body boards. No, uh, oh, what's the other one? It's just the short boards and board long or, boards. Okay. Yeah. Those are the only ones. They have to be riding actual surfboards. Um, many of the owners of these dog surfers are surfers themselves. Well, uh, that's not, yeah. Big wave surfer Scott Chandler and his Jack Russell Terrier Zoe are a surfer team. Oh, so they're considered a team then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the dog needs a little help to get up, <laughs> right? Here's, I like, uh, like, so. like the dog like jumps on a surfboard on his back and runs <laughs> out there and then paddles out on top and then jumps up on the board. Dog doesn't know what it's doing. The dog's just along for the ride. <laughs> I, I like that it's a surfer, though, that helps form this team and not like a cigar chomping manager. Like, get out there and make me some money, surf right. dog. Go out, <laughs> surf dog. <laughs> That's the next air bud. Yes, <laughs> surf, surf bud. Uh, so, yeah, a bunch of famous people did it. Uh, they do the national championships every year. Get the dogs up. I saw some videos of it. It's very, it's very cute. How long do the dogs stay on the board? 
I mean, they stay on the board for the duration. Usually, the the owner is also on the board, and the dog's just kind of enjoying. Oh, they ride it. They ride together. Yeah, they can ride together or separate. Um, sometimes, but the, it's always the owner getting them going, and then the dog just kind of stands there right. with like its mouth hanging open, not really sure what's going on. <laughs> the dog doesn't know. <laughs> it it knows that the wind is rushing in its face, and that people are happy. Yeah, people are cheering, and they, the dog knows that it's not wet on the board, and it would be wet in the water. <laughs> And therefore, it has to stay on the board. <laughs> Dogs are smarter How than you How high are these waves? Uh, they're very, they're gentle waves. I don't think they'd put the dog out on, like, the the Mavericks or whatever it's called. And Isn't that the world's biggest wave? It's called Mavericks? I have no, I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not, I just act like I'm a surfer. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, it's, I mean, the only times Mavericks have caused that big of a wave is the McCain and Palin ticket. hey <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, that's delightful. Uh, most breeds of dogs are riding mid-lengths. Uh, there's only a few long borders out there. Give me an example of a long border. Are we talking a big dog? Yeah, it's got to be a big dog. Most yeah. dogs are riding like the, a Great Dane. Dogs. Yeah. It's got a St. Bernard. I would like to see that. I don't know. I've never saw a video of a St. Bernard. St. Bernard, little bourbon around its neck there. Yeah, yeah. Little sunglasses and little Bermuda shorts. Do they put sunglasses on the dog? They do in a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> it's, it seems like... There's a good amount of showmanship, it would seem. Yeah. I mean, this sport is... I look at this sport in the same way that I look at um, like the floor routines that were recently in the Olympics. Okay. Like, it's about... If you didn't wear the makeup and had the pretty outfit... It wouldn't feel like a sport anymore. Okay. Right? No, imagine those those floor exercise girls if they just kind of rolled out of bed. Floor exercise? You mean gymnasts? The, no, the ones that do the ribbon dancing. Rhythmic gymnastics. Rhythmic gymnastics, yeah. Imagine, ribbon dancer is yeah. what they were when we were kids. Right. Okay. If they didn't put on the makeup and the flashy suit, what would it be? It would just be a <laughs> bunch of trashy people. It's like, I'm flipping. Here's my ribbon. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same way with dog surfing. You gotta give them the little Hawaiian shirts, and you gotta they give them the shirts 80s on them too. Yeah, they oh do. my god! I feel like oh, these dogs are these dogs are all like the dude from Big Lebowski. Oh man! Yeah, and they're chilling. They're, they don't know what's going on, but they love no it. No idea. But people are cheering. They're having the time of their lives. And these are actual ocean waves. This isn't like at a at a water park creating waves, right? Right. No, this is they're in the. Oh, they could get eaten by a shark. Well, heaven forbid. Right. <laughs> they get they get eaten by a shark just. Where's that mash theme? <laughs> Glasses and a bloodied Hawaiian shirt floating to the top of the water. <laughs> I can't hit those high notes. Well, that's pretty much it. The dogs surf. People will cheer. That's awesome. Yeah. I am. I, this is the most, you know what? I'm, I'm glad Joel wasn't here because he probably would have pissed all over. He would have poo-pooed this idea. He would have not had nearly as much fun as we did. Yeah. I love dog surfing. I do too. Well, that brings an end to another Weird sports! Oh, All right, everyone, that brings us to the end of another sports sports podcast. But before we go, we'd like to give you our contact information. You can email us at sports 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 podcast at gmail.com. That's sports 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 podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at sports the number three podcast. That's sports the number three podcast you can find us on facebook by searching sports 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 podcast your little top bar thingy you can find us on stitcher radio by searching sports 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 podcast download the stitcher app today at stitcher.com or you can find us at itunes by searching sports the number three space podcast sports the number three all one word space podcast while you're there rate and review it helps us out so do it for sure and you know what? there's another podcast i listen to yeah they do a similar promo at the beginning and end about being on stitcher radio yeah and i think i'm on a podcast that's on stitcher radio see when it comes down to it we, we're all bleed red in the inside absolutely even among podcasts that's even true. among podcasters lights off have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit ComedyPodcastNetwork.com.